If you're an average player, you want to be left alone, all right, because you want to be able to slide by. If you're a good player, you want to be coached. If you're a great player, you want the coach to tell you the truth every day. Did I hustle on that play? Did I make the right read? Did I play the guy with the right leverage? You want to know every play, because you know why? They want to be perfect. Everybody here makes a choice to do one of those three things. Welcome to the GOAT Consulting Podcast, a podcast dedicated to people striving to be a GOAT, the greatest of all time, serving it up in a way that you can get it in all stages of life. Hey, I'm Colby Jubinville, and welcome to another episode of the GOAT Consulting Podcast right here in VC Productions in studio in Nashville, Tennessee. we got a great show for you today. As always at the tables, my good friend Tyler Burnett. Tyler is wearing the GOAT brand of the goat family of brands and the goat empire it's not goat Tyler. family anymore you know i've shut everything down except goat turf i'm, I'm getting focused oh, wow. still laser you're, focused. you're still a family focused you do episode on that. family yeah. first mission yep. focused people driven business that's right to the left wearing the brb be right back yes jesus finally got here t-shirt the linkedin whisper the calming force to our show uh, john byers john Thank thanks for being here <laughs> so glad to be remembered and, and every once in a while you, you meet Incredible people that help you at the crossroads of your life. And the saying is that the right message from the right man at the right time can change the world. And for me, certainly one of those people is is who is at the table today, my good friend Joe Calloway. Mm. Joe, you, you've done so much for so many. Um, I wrote my first book, and, and I thought it was – really, really good until I read your books. <laughs> and then I want to take that book and I don't ever want it to be published again, but it's out there to the world. And as you know, writing a book is a, is a vulnerable act. Um, but your writing is, is just so powerful, so emotional and so simple. And I think provides so much insight for other people. And, uh, we're so glad that you're here today and can't wait to have a conversation with you. Yeah. Not about you, but about what's going on today yeah. in the world and having your perspective. So we appreciate you being here well, today. you know, I would usually have a, a snappy, funny comeback to that, but those are kind words, <laughs> and that's high praise, and I don't take it lightly, so thank you very much. Well, I mean, so certainly you're part of this. I mean, somebody said to me at one time, uh, Colby, you're a lot like Waffle House. You serve it up in a way that people can get it. <laughs> And I'm thinking to myself, man, if Callaway could hear that, hear that I because, love that because that's that's Joe Callaway at his finest, and I certainly learned how to do it from you, and, and I also learned this from you. In our 20s, we get in the game. In our 30s, we move up in the game. In mm-hmm. our 40s, we stay in the game. We try to because those 30 year olds are so good. In our 50s, we say, "What is it that I really want?" And I can remember when I called you years ago, and I said, "I'm not crazy. I'm not a serial killer. I'm a, I'm a bored college professor that wants to be you." And I said, "Can I come talk to you?" And you said, Colby, you can come talk to me whenever you want. And we sat there yep. in Nashville and talked for three to four hours. And wow. I walked out with more clarity and focus and direction about what I wanted for my life. And it's in those moments that those seeds are planted where you start thinking about life and business and relationships. And so we also talk about the goat here, the greatest of all time. And certainly we have one at the table with, with books like and I know this is your favorite book because you're, it's from your favorite author, which is you, which is one of the, the things you talk about. It's also my favorite book because the publishing company came up with that cover. <laughs> <laughs> That's been the best book cover for me because, because you, you people look at it. And they say, scoot your left hand out of the way. Sorry, life. sorry. People look at it and say, that's it. We want to be the green apple. <laughs> yeah. And I had one CEO say, I bought a copy of the book for everybody in the company. I don't even care if they read it. I just want them to look at the cover. <laughs> and under- so you know I have a good cover. <laughs> and understand, we want to be the green apple. Mm, wow. Powerful. And, it, and it's simple, simple ideas like that. But, but goats in sports, just like in sports, goats are easy to see. They're recognized for their greatness. Yeah. They elevate the play around them. Yeah. But in business, goats compete on unique perspective, unique education, and unique experience. What they do gives them energy, and it gives other people energy, creates new levels of challenge and new levels of opportunity. And, and it's all brought together by our good friends at, at Dev, 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 Digital. Dev Digital and digitizing the world. And, and they want to be the best at what matters most. They do. And, and so here's where I want to start. And I know that... This is not just about asking Joe questions today, but having a great conversation. I want to start with your book titles. Okay. Be the best 
at what matters that's most. most. God, that's so good. And so it's so simply profound. <laughs> well, I called Callaway once I got to know him. I'd still be a little bit scared when I call Callaway because, you know, he's out, he's out doing his thing and he's Callaway. And so I said, Callaway, you know what's so cool about your books? And he, he said, what? I said, well, the titles are so good that you don't even need to read them. <laughs> he goes, I know. Isn't that, isn't that really cool? And, then if you, and, and a lot of people <laughs> have looked at it, the title in the bookstore and said, that's all I need and walked out. <laughs> <laughs> they should have had to swipe a card to look at it or something. Yeah, you know? I know, exactly. <laughs> and then if you open it up and you go to chapter two, do you remember what chapter two is, Joe? What is it? Chapter two is it's not that complicated. Guess how many pages chapter two is? Two pages. <laughs> two pages. <laughs> 13 to 15. <laughs> two pages. That's beautiful. I want to read the titles of his books. Here we go. Joe. Obviously, category of one, be the best of what matters most. Keep it simple. Work like you're showing off. Indispensable. Work like you're showing off. Work like you're showing off. Never by chance. Yeah. Where do you get the inspiration? If you look at those titles, they're all book titles that could stand by themselves. You almost don't need to read the book. If somebody walks up to you and says, you're 20 years old. Hey, the number one thing you need to do is you need to work like you're showing off. Mm -hmm. You could just take that idea and build on that. So one of the things that I would be interested in is if you look at those titles, how did you go be the best at what matters most? That's it for me. The titles are an interesting process for me because almost every time I've, I've done eight books, and almost every time I've come up with a title and gone, that's it. Man, that's the best title of all time. Mm. I immediately go on Amazon and put the title in, and there's the book already there. <laughs> ah. So it's gone. I have to come up with another title. I did that once with Rich Dad, Poor Dad, but it was already, <laughs> yeah. it was already yeah. a thing. Uh, no. <laughs> ah. Just makes you slap your head. Yes. <laughs> the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Like, I thought, this is, no one's ever thought of this. And yeah, sure enough, somebody did. It, it's a process then of just noodling. I remember, be the best of what matters most. I was at the Red Cross donating blood, and I was laying there, and I thought, oh, best. Be the best of what matters most. Holy cow, that's it. And with one hand, I went to Amazon. Ah, <laughs> I can do it. It's available. Mm. And, and I called my publisher from there. So a lot of times you just... You, you put it in the computer and it just spins around and you're noodling on it and taking in different ideas and then it, it just pops out. Yeah. Be the best of what matters most. Still, Tell, a, what does that mean? Still, Tell us that. Like that's the first, maybe the only thing I would want to leave. I'm sure we could have several episodes on that, but tell me what that means to you. Well, look at what's in the background. Quality wins. Always improve consistency. These are the ideas that matter most. Be the best at those. If you were coaching me uh -huh. and I said, Joe, like, help me figure out, like, is there a blueprint? Help me wa like walk through an exercise with me to help me figure out what that means to me. Well, that is a great question because, and I've said <clears throat> in two or three of my books, I've said, if you bought this book thinking there's going to be a step-by-step so step how to, and I'm going to fill in the blanks for you, there that's not one. the way it works. Yeah. I want to give you some ideas that will help you figure it out. Because what matters most to you is not going to be what matters yeah, yeah. most to him or what matters most right. to him. So it, it's a matter of um, being a catalyst that helps people think through and in that book, one of the things I like about that book, and I didn't do it with every book, is at the end of each chapter, there's questions that you ask yourself. Or there's that exercises. helps me answer that question I just asked you. Yeah, and there's exercises mm -hmm. that you go through with your team. And, and part of it is, um, it's this idea of, well, well, just on a personal level, what, what do we care about? What is important to us? Uh, and then what's important to our company, looking at it through the, through the eyes of your customers, 
what's important to them. Um, in and out Burger, West Coast. Just was there. Legendary, yeah. Do you get your food really fast there? No. You wait. Yeah. That's part of the deal. Being fast is not what matters most to them. Mm. And it's also not what matters most to their customers. Their customers mm. go, I'm willing to wait for that burger. Because what matters what matters most to, to In and Out Burger is, the restaurant. Is, is serving only high quality, the highest quality food with friendly, exceptional service in a sparkling, clean environment. Yeah. And they've decided if we do these three things better than anybody else will win. Old Dominion Freight Line. God, this is one of my favorites. Listen to this. This I just I love this. Number one, pick it up when you said you would. Number two, deliver it when you said you would. Number three, deliver it intact and all there. Yeah. Now think about this. Simple. That stuff's all inside the box. But if you win, I don't mean just be competitive. If you are distinctive on the basic customer expectations and being, as it says on the cover there, consistent, because consistency of performance is the brand builder. Um, one, one thing that, that popped in my head once that, that I like uh, that was a keeper for me is be so good at the basics that you're cutting edge. Yeah. I, I, this it, it, one of the things that you teach is that if you win at the basics, you win. Yeah. Period. You, so you asked the question about coach you on how to use this. One of the the key concepts in this book, which is what what really took me on the path that I am today, is this idea of of what's your version of that. Mm. That's yep. one of the things that you teach, and I'd never heard that before. So if you see a great idea somewhere else, if you see them executing on that idea, if you see a piece of the idea, Joe's. Joe's teaching point, his coaching point is, so what is your version of that? That's, that's what adaptive goats do. innovation. That's what goats do, right? They level up that thing. Well, and that's that's seeing an eye over there, an, eye, an idea over there, or maybe you're a customer, and something happens at the place of business, and you go, what's our version? That's cool. Yeah. That's powerful. This business is 180 degrees opposite. We just talked about that with Kane Prong. But, say again? We just talked about that with Kane Prong. The experience, oh, okay. the, yeah. Right? It's, oh, yeah, it came from. It's so yeah. different. It's more expensive. It's well, but what I'm saying is there are restaurants that could look at your turf company and what you do and say, what's that our, is killer good. Yeah. That's a turf company. But what's our version of what he's doing? That's right. In a restaurant. Right. Well, that's I mean, what I, that's the experience I'm trying to emulate I when I would go to Cane Yes, Prime exactly. Is, I like this there they do, go. and I, I go do this. I love this they did. And also, here's what I hate. Yes, it's it works. It's just as powerful from that perspective. So one of the biggest things I do in turf, you have to measure the job out and lay it out and come to the job with the right materials. I just had my shower glass changed out. We had They didn't have a door on it. The builder said it couldn't be a door. We, we got a glass company to come out and say they could add a door. Yeah. You know, they had three people come out and measure that glass, three different measurements, and they got it wrong. Three people measured my glass. Yeah, yeah and they got it wrong. It wasn't like we were measuring a, a building with windows all in it in downtown Nashville that was 46 stories tall. It's a shower glass. You've been in business 46 years. You can't measure the shower glass with one person? Yeah. Well, we have we need, to, we need to come back out because we need to have the next guy check the first guy. You know how inconvenient that is for most people? To yeah. come in their house three different times, like I told my guys, that cannot be the case for us ever. Sure. Yeah, you, the, the customer can never say you can never say to the customer, "I need to come." Well, if you have to, you have to, but we need to come back and m- make sure our measurements were right. How does that make you feel? Yeah, like we just hired somebody who doesn't even know how to measure turf. It's what they do all day, every day. Yeah. So to when, your point, when you were talking a moment ago, I thought of this quote, and I'm going to tie this in because we're both bourbon connoisseurs, lovers. Yeah. And I thought about this quote, but rather than tell you why I thought about it, I'd love for you to maybe connect the dot and tell okay. me what you think. So Pappy Van Winkle, yeah. you've probably heard of him. He, he said, we make fine bourbon at a profit if we can, at a loss if we must, but always fine bourbon. Yeah. Super clear yep. on what he wanted to do, and the currency wasn't – Money. Yeah, it's, you know, it pops in my head when you say that. 
I go back to the, the In and Out Burger. We will ser- use only the highest quality ingredients food. You know, it's it, come up to use something less quality over the course of well, their career. Well, here's the deal. Yeah, the head of purchasing goes to the CEO, says, I found us a deal on lettuce, and it can save us $1.2 million a year. CEO is going to automatically say, is it the highest quality mm. lettuce? Well, it's really good. Is it the highest quality lettuce? No, it's not. Then we're not going to do it. Mm. Just had this conversation the other day. Yeah. Some guy said, "Well, I, I don't use I don't use coated sand because, you know, it's just more expensive." I said, "Yeah, but you don't have to worry about it." Yeah. And that's what you're trying to give your customer is if you're doing fake grass, you don't want to be servicing that yard again in a few months. It, listen, if you know what matters most, if you've got clarity around that, then so many decisions are made in advance. It's in the culture. Uh, it's, there's a famous story about Southwest Airlines. The, <laughs> so the good. Head of, there's a lot of famous stories about Southwest. But a head of marketing, whoever went to Herb Kelleher and said, Herb, we've got some long-haul flights. Like they used to fly Nashville to Seattle. That's a long flight. Yeah. And he said, we've got a lot of customers saying, we want a meal. You know, back when they served meals, even in economy. And, of course, Southwest <laughs> is all economy. But uh, he said, they want meals, Herb. And Herb said, well, is serving meals going to help keep us the lowest cost airline? And she said, well, probably not. It's going to cost us money. He said, well, they were not going to do it. Yeah. You know, he got a letter one time from a customer that said, I, all you all you have is peanuts, and I want something better to eat. I'm, I don't think I'm going to fly Southwest anymore unless you have something better to eat. And he wrote her back and said, we're going to miss you. <laughs> He's a legend. But do you know how many people, like, so good. I, I'm finding this as I have more and more experience. There's so many people out there in the world that don't know how to say no because they don't know what their yes is. Yes, you're right. We just talked about that with yeah. your career, and it's crazy. I had another business where I had I did printing, and then I had a sports facility, and I recently just shut it down because I want to focus on what I'm doing, and I want to be really freaking good at it. And because I don't want to keep saying yes to everything because, oh, you can be successful at business. Let's just do another one. Yeah. Well, it's a finite mindset. That's yeah. what it is, right? As opposed to this infinite or an abundant mindset. Joe, one of the ways that we def- one of the ways that we honor our guests, and I know you really wanted us to just let you run the whole show here, and um, <laughs> not really, not really. <laughs> but we are gonna we are gonna trickle in a couple things that we hope that you would indulge us. And one of the ways that we honor our guests, we haven't had a guest on yet that hasn't given us a definition of a goat. Would love to hear your definition of a goat and then share a goat with us. Person, place, thing, moment. We've had goats of all kinds. And it can be simple. Define a goat, share a goat. What says Uh, the legend Joe Calloway? Goat is, to me, in business, uh, it's hard to say who would be the greatest business person of all time. So I'll, I'll talk about somebody I consider to be one of the greatest business That's people right. that I personally know. He lives in Nashville, Terry Turner, CEO of Pinnacle Bank. Um, and the things... I thought you were going to say Joe Scarlett. You guys are buddies. No, I've got He's a, a good list. one. I've got a list. Interestingly enough, Terry and Joe have things in common, as do most of the goats in business that I admire. Terry and Joe <clears throat> are are so transparent. You so know what is important to them. <clears throat> you so know. You don't hope. You know that they believe in what they're doing. They are both so genuinely committed and enthusiastic uh, about what they do. Um, they both are great at relating Terry CEO, Joe was CEO, then chairman of the board of Tractor Supply. And they are so great at relating, in Terry's case, to the tellers, uh, to the people in the back rooms. Joe would go into the stores and... Tractor and Supply. T- t- yeah, Tractor Supply. And, uh, I mean, Joe would go in, and Joe is just larger-than-life enthusiastic. Um, 
which you don't have to be. You can be the quietest person in the room and be the most effective leader that's ever been. <clears throat> but Joe would go in the scores, stores, he'd clap his hands, and he'd say something like, hey, is three a crowd in this store? You bet, Joe. That means if there's two people in line at a checkout counter and a third person gets in line, you open another register. Mm. Three's a crowd. We don't want people to wait. But here you got the chairman of the board talking about that way of doing business. And, I mean, he used to, Joe used to walk in the warehouse and say, hey, I'm Joe Scarlett. I'm CEO. That means I'm pure overhead. <laughs> but here's what I can do. I can help you guys do your jobs better. Tell me what's getting in your way. Now, see, you tell me what's getting in your way. I'll go back to Nashville and I'll fix it. Now, see, I love that. They're yeah. expert obstacle removers. Yes, they or, are. Or, or they should be. Yeah, goats. they, they well, certainly goats. should be. Goats are expert. Expert, yeah. Ask, ask, the right, ask the right questions. But, mm. but CEO whether should it's be. Your, whether it's your employees or the customers, you have to ask the right questions. And you know what else? They're, they're goats. Joe and Terry are great examples. They're, they're curious. They are absolute. It's like you were talking about uh, always getting better. That's just the way you were kind of raised yeah. to think. They are never-ending learners. They don't have to be the smartest person in the room. As a matter of fact, they would say, if I'm the smartest person in the room, I'm and not doing my room. job. Yeah. That's right. And in the wrong Steve, room. Steve Jobs said one time, we don't hire smart people to tell them what to do. We hire smart people to tell yeah. us what to do. That's right. And so there, it's funny. There, There's these, although their personalities can be the whole spectrum, but there's these seeming like handful of traits and characteristics and values-based uh characteristics that the goats all seem to have. Well, I know we're about to land the plane here, but I think the, one of the biggest takeaways for me and what it can be about the, for, for the audience is figure out what matters most to you and your family and your business yeah. and, and really, really figure that out because if not, you're running on a hamster wheel. I might say, think about your people. Where are the obstacles and how can you remove them? To me, that's one that's of the biggest big takeaways. One. That's a big one. But goats are masterful <clears throat> at removing obstacles. Remove the obstacles. Problem the, solvers. While they are pure overhead, CEOs are also <laughs> – th- I think the takeaway for me is that the role of the CEO in your mind should be in Category 1 companies, in companies that understand about being the best and what matters most, about keeping it simple. CEOs are, are people that come in and say, tell me what you need to do what I need to do to make your life better. And also, everybody in the company have an absolute clarity and understanding on, I know what this company is about, I know where we're going, and I know the role that I, in my particular job, play in that. I love it. Yeah. Companies that have a clear sense of, a very clear sense of who they are when. Yeah. In business. We'll land it right there for Tyler Burnett, John Byers, and Joe Calloway. I'm Colby Jibbonville, and this is the Goat Consultant Podcast. Oh.